Hello everybody and welcome to Chrono Plays with Old Stuff. I had a sudden realization yesterday that I'm working in a museum. I have access to all kinds of really old video games. Why am I actually paying attention to work and not playing these things? So today I'm taking a look at a system we got just yesterday. The Radio Shack TV Scoreboard. It is a Generation 1 video game console, and you'll notice, you'll know Generation 1 was mostly about the Magnavox Odyssey and Pong, you know, Atari's Pong, and there were a lot of clones, and there's a reason for that, and that's because Ralph Baer, the inventor of the Odyssey, had a patent on video games. I shit you not. And everybody licensed the patent from Magnavox. Uh, yeah, it's all very confusing, and yeah, I'll get into that some other day. But let's take a look at the uh, Radio Shack TV scoreboard, which for the record has a very terrible name in my opinion. It's a TV scoreboard. I, I looked at it first, and I'm like, what the crap is this thing? At not realizing right off the bat it was a uh, actual game, I thought it was just something to keep track of, like, football on TV or something. It was just weird. All right, so uh, first thing we see is that there are no cartridge slots, and that makes sense because the first generation of video games was basically noted by no ROM cartridges. Now, the I know the Odyssey had game, car game cards, but they weren't ROM cards. So, yeah, there's no ROM cards. There's a switch to switch between the four games that come built into the system. We have a uh, max min setting, which is for slice. I have no idea what the hell that actually means. It didn't seem to do anything when I flipped it, so I have no idea. Then we got the paddle size, large and small. I guess to adjust difficulty levels, maybe? I don't know. Uh, then the ball, fast, slow, another difficulty, and then an on-off switch. Now, the controllers I, struck me as very weird. They are paddles, basically. Uh, potentiometer switches, not knobs like they normally are. Uh, and they don't, like, bounce back to the center or anything. They're just position slidey switches. It's really strange. It struck me as very odd. It also struck me as very odd that the second controller has the start button. And if you look very closely at it, it looks tacked on. It looks like it was added after the fact. Uh, we initially thought it might have been modded, but uh, you know, reading the instruction manual, nope, that's where the button's supposed to be. Apparently, the right controller is the second player, which I guess kind of makes sense, considering the games. Um, but uh, another thing that has struck me as really weird, and this is something that is not unheard of in the first generation, it's just incredibly rare. So far, I've only seen three consoles of the first generation that do this, and that is removable controllers. And uh, there's a little tiny slit underneath the controller here where the cord can be put out of place. But of course, if the cord gets tangled in there, it makes it difficult to pull out without risking damaging the controller. So let's take a look at this thing. Um, we can see how we connect it up. We have the uh, video connector in the back. Now that is not composite video. That is uh, RF, radio frequency. So this plugs in not to the back of the TV, but more of to where the antenna plugs in or the cable, or whatever you're using. I know, that's unusual. Uh, we have a channel selector switch. This is something we had back in the day when we used the antenna for you know, displaying video. Uh, it picked between channel 3 and channel 4. You know, In case you had like an actual channel on channel 3, uh, it could potentially interfere with your game, so you would switch it over to Channel 4. Uh, back then, the odds of having something on Channel 3 and on Channel 4 were ex extremely slim, so it probably didn't happen to anybody. And then we have the very unusual power adapter there, and I say it's unusual because I can't pick it up. It's too short. Oh, 
There we go, the mic stand was on it. It is, it looks like a headphone jack. And uh, it's unusual to me. I'm used to seeing the round ones with the hole in the middle. So, yeah. But this kind of connector seems to be incredibly common for the older video game systems. So plug that in, make sure you're off. Come on, plug in, there we go. Now this did come with an antenna switch, which I'm not using because we don't have the proper cable for it. Uh, the connection on the back is a regular RCA style connection. However, the cable on the switch box is for the a game cord, which is a different kind of connection, and it looks weird. Uh, do I have one? I think I have one over there. It looks like this, and that is a very well unusual connection again for me, but it seems to be fairly common for older video game systems. Um, basically mostly first gen that I've seen. And uh, it plugs into its little switch here through its game cord port, which is, again, just a really weird type of connection. I'm not used to it. And then we plug it into the back of the TV through VHF. <laughs> So we're talking old school here. So this is before they started using coax for everything. Uh, this connected into just the VHS pins that you have on the back of your TV. And then you can plug your antenna in here and then switch between TV and antenna. So it's just this is just a simple switch. You don't have to use this. If you can connect it directly to your TV, it would work. But most people can't connect it directly to their TV because they don't have an RCA coax connection. So it's just different. Um, I, however, am using the Fairchild connection because we just have this RCA cable. So I'm using that one because it's generation two and generation two seems to have started over with mostly focusing on the RCA cables. I guess they took over as a primary form of connection. So let's actually turn this thing on and see what happens. So. Here I have my standard Trinitron TV. It's a 13 inch, 17 inch maybe, I actually forget, but it's from 1972. And it actually was made in 1972. So we're talking an old TV with a few problems. So just fair warning there. Boop. And it's just a regular TV with of course, wavy lines in there because it's running at, uh, 60 hertz, well, slightly off of 60 hertz, and the camera's running off of actually 60 hertz. So you're actually seeing the refresh rate of the monitor. That's what the lines are. But once we turn on the console, you'll notice it less, slightly less. Anyways, so what do we have here? We have, well, basically, the first controller is controlling the paddle as it were, and we have a start button, and we're playing Pong. Well, this is actually set to the fourth setting, which is practice. But if you remember in Futurama, during, I believe it was Amy and Kiff's wedding, Leela was playing a one-player Pong game on her arm thingamajig. This is what she was playing. And that's all it is, it's just, the paddle bouncing a ball off the wall. And the sound you hear is not actually coming from the TV. Even though the antenna had the ability to transport sound, most game consoles, from what I can tell from the first generation, didn't use that ability. They used built-in speakers. So if I turn off the TV, you can still hear the sounds. I obviously can't play the game because I have no idea what's going on. <laughs> so yeah, this is uh, this is the first one. This is practice. So basically, you can get the hang of the controller, and it, it just it's a, feels weird to me. I guess it makes sense considering the other ones that are out there because they have knobs and they're potentiometers. 
so they don't bounce back. Like, you would kind of expect it, if it was a joystick, you would expect the controller to bounce back. I'm also noticing that the ball is going through the paddle again. I have to restart it. I think that happens after you get to 15. If you fail 15 times, the game doesn't reset. It doesn't give you a game over or anything. It just keeps going. So, yeah. Now, the other games... Oops, turn that off. Uh, we have hockey, we have handball, and we have tennis. So let's start with the basic tennis. This is what everybody's used to. It's going to take both controllers, so I'm going to have to adjust things slightly so I can play both sides at once, since I don't have a second player right now. Tried to get a second player, but uh, he didn't answer his phone. Hmm. Come on. There we go. In the hole. All right, so let's turn you on. And we can see it looks a hell of a lot like Pong. And it's controlled much like Pong as well. And basically the ball bounces back and forth. And whoever loses, uh, the other player gets to serve and all that fun jazz. It's standard Pong, you know. Nothing too terribly impressive. What happens when we get up to 15? Does it do the glitchy thingy where the ball doesn't hit the paddle anymore and it doesn't fail or anything like that? Let's find out. All right, so we're on 15. And yeah, I cannot hit the ball anymore. So I have straight up lost. That strikes me as weird. Yeah, there is no game over. There is no lose. There is no win. It just kind of stops working. And then, of course, you hit start, and it resets the game back to what it was. Let's move on. Handball. Turn you on. And now, this confused me initially, because there are two players, both on the same side, and only one of them can hit the ball at the time. And it's really hard to tell which one is supposed to hit the ball at any given time, especially when you're playing you know, with two hands. <laughs> so I'm playing both players, so it's kind of confusing to tell. It's just really confusing to tell who's who. You really have to keep track of it. There are no tellers, so you can't tell who's who. Uh, and it's just, in general, not easy, to say the least. But, I mean, it's handball. I, as far as I know, if this is how handball works... It's just you don't have the bouncy thing. And I can't tell which one's supposed to be hitting the ball anymore. <laughs> nope. Okay. All right. Let's turn you off. Uh, and then let's switch over to the final game, hockey. Boop. Which you have somebody close in. Woo. So you can see one controller is controlling this paddle and this paddle. It's not duplicating. This is actually how you play the game. And the other controller is playing this paddle and this paddle. So that way you can have up close games. So I can... Yeah. And it does add a little bit of complexity to the game. And it's... <laughs> actually kind of interesting. I like this. This is old school stuff. And I like old school stuff. And uh, again, there's no end state. Uh, they did not program in a failure point. So you can just keep going. But after 15, it's just going to stop letting you hit the ball. So, yeah. So, yes, anyway, so that is the Radio Shack TV scoreboard. A fairly simple game, but I quite enjoy it. It works very well, and, uh, yeah, just very interesting thing. It's kind of a pain in the butt to put away, though. There it goes. Okay. So, I will see you guys in the next episode, and as always, keep playing the game, and have fun.